Do electronics confuse you? Do you fear them? Do you leave them to your team's builder and pretend to be AFK when someone asks you to set up a turret? Did your last attempt to set up a light switch look something like this? If so, this five minute rust guide might be just for you. We're gonna look at what you can do with electronic components without any power generation or any circuits. So first things first, for power free electronics, we'll be relying on push buttons and pressure pads. Both of these items are essentially the same really. When they're activated, either by stepping or pressing, they output one power for about half a second. Now, this might not sound like much, but in some situations it's enough. So you can find pressure pads and push buttons just from running roads, look, grabbing crates, that kind of thing. So let's look at what they do. These buttons will output one power for a fraction of a second. That means if we've got a light, we can light it for a half a second or so and it turns off. Not very useful. What we can do with them though is toggle a switch on something that has a separate power supply. So for instance this water pump, if it has a proper power supply, we can just collect a push button to toggle the little on off lever. We can connect one to a Tesla coil to do no damage for no time, which is useless. We can connect one to one of these great Wi-Fi output of things, RF outputs. We press that, it makes the signal, and then if you happen to own one of these nice little pages, you'll get a bleep on the pager. But one of the most useful things you can do is operate a door controller. Now, if you press a button attached to a door controller and the door is closed, the door will open and then close again. This can be very useful as I'll show you later. Also, even more useful, if the door starts open and you push the button, it will instantly close. So, let's have a look at what we can do. Now, on the most basic thing is you could make a couple of pressure pads on door controllers on the way out of your base. Now, I wouldn't put this anywhere near your tool cupboard or anywhere near any loot because obviously door controllers can be rewired if someone gets tool cupboard access, but you could use this to quickly get out of your base without accidentally leaving any of your doors open or maybe the last couple of doors, like so. Really simple system. All it is is a pressure pad hooked up to a door controller to the door. Now, this door controller interaction is very, very useful for closing things that you leave open without wanting to. So in this situation, the exit to our base is on the roof. We climb up on the exit, and let's say we die before we manage to close the ladder hatch. In this way, you can spawn in your base, push the button, and the ladder hatch will close. Great way to seal up your base. We can actually do this with a pressure pad too. Consider this example. We have a shooting floor up here, and we're protecting our base from a rain. We have a rocket launcher in our hand with some HV rockets. We've got a lovely trap door here with a pressure pad. Stepping on the pad will open the hole, allowing us to fire a rocket at our enemies and then instantly closing the trap door. This means that if we're killed accidentally or if we're shot or we blow ourselves up, the ladder hatch will just close itself and not allow anyone to get in through the hole. And the cycle time is plenty long enough to get a rocket shot out. Now we can also use this interaction for trap bases. Our trap is made here by an open land hatch in the roof. We can bait it with a box or something maybe, or I like to probably bait it with an open door because it looks like there might be far more to go deep on. We cover up a pr pressure pad, in fact in this case two pressure pads, one on top of each other with a couple of sleeping bags. When our unsuspecting guest jumps down the hole, two things happen. First of all, one pressure pad cycles the hatch, locking them in, preventing anyone from getting their loot back. And the second pressure pad opens this door with the shotgun traps. Now, although it's only one power for a fraction of a second, you'll see that is plenty of time to cycle and kill someone with a couple of traps. There's no one gonna survive that sort of onslaught. I think even if you had one shotgun trap in there, it would probably be enough. Now, another thing we can do with one power for a fraction of a second is igniters. Now this is the classic example, we push our button and light all our furnaces. Wow, how useless. We have absolutely no need for this whatsoever. Don't build this, eh, just never build this. However, there is more we can do with it. We've got a pit trap here supported by a twig half wall. We have a pressure pad on the top of it, which will cover with a rug or a sleeping bag or something. We need a super soaker and we need a grenade. We're gonna chuck the grenade in this corner by the igniter. Switch to our super soaker, give it a squirt, and put the grenade out. Now the igniter will actually reignite the grenade, which will blow up this wall and collapse the trap. On 
into all the bear traps. It's a bit convoluted, but hey, you could have some fun with that. Here's a more realistic and easy use case for that. It's night, you're back at your base. You finally got to the door and you get in and you've got no torch or nothing and you have to try and find your way. Well, this simple push button on the wall goes to an igniter, connects to a campfire in the middle of our base. It's not quite electric lighting, but hey, it might work for you. Now, that's all the basic electronics we can do. However, there's one more little consideration about some of the components. So, these lights are actually quite a good jumper. You can use these instead of a furnace or something. If you don't want to waste a furnace or there's not space because you've got some other storage, you can use these little siren lights as great jumper. This is your 2x2, two two. your loot room's in here, and this means that people outside can build a twig, get on top of your base, kill you, and then go deep and win all the money. Now, with these little siren lights, what we can do is prevent them doing this. So we find the area that they would normally build a twig roof on to get on top. And then we get one of these lights and we play it, place it exactly where that roof would go. Now this blocks the socket, so you can't build in this area anymore. Now these things are actually surprisingly sturdy. Um, I think they've got a couple of under pictures and regular ammo, you know. Surprisingly, surprisingly sturdy, even against explosive bullets. I think you can probably hack them to death with things like this, but this is not the kind of thing that people are going to do if they just want to quickly get on your roof. And there we go. Electronics without electric, a five-minute guide to rust by Caliban the British. Thanks for watching.